Welcome friends, it's Ray. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm making cards using the May 2021 Hero Arts Monthly Card Kit. And if you missed the unboxing, I will link to that uh, below so that you can see the details of the kit. I've placed my bold prints inverse bubbles uh, stamp, background stamp in my Misty, placed a piece of Arctic Blue Hero Hues cardstock um, in the Misty, prepping it for heat embossing. I'm using Hero Arts Midtone Navy ink to stamp my background. I stamped that three times for good coverage and am using the embossing powder underwater embossing powder that came in the kit and to heat emboss. Once I have the embossing powder all over this panel, I'm going to set this panel aside and use the bold print um, background stamp on a piece of quartz pearlescent cardstock that came in the kit. So I prepped it for heat embossing, cleaned my stamp, and now I'm using Bursa Mark clear embossing ink and embossing that panel. I heat up my heat tool only once and emboss both panels. Uh, back to back. I start on the back of each panel, uh, the back first, and then bring the heat tool to the front. Off camera, I have stamped and die cut all of the images from the kit. I've stamped all of the images on one sheet. Uh, so that I can run them through my die cutting machine all together one time. My Arctic Blue panel measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and I am cutting um, three half inch strips of that card panel. And my quartz pearlescent cardstock measures four by five and a half, and I am cutting two half inch strips of that cardstock. As you probably guessed, I am making a slimline card uh, that measures three and three quarters by eight and a half inches. And I'm just uh, here laying out how I want my panel to look. I'm using the grid lines on my craft mat to space out uh, my focal pieces and we'll use some low tech tape to kind of mark the spot um, where I want to adhere these strips to my card panel. I am using liquid adhesive to affix my strips of card stock to my panel. I go through and pl place all of my card strips on my card stock. Once I have all of the strips affixed, I trim the sides. Next, I work on my sentiment. And um, had I planned it out a little differently, I would have spaced it so that I could stamp my sentiment directly on the panel. Well, did think of that. So I am actually going to hopefully frame this sentiment so that um, it appears as though it was stamped, you know, direct on the panel. So that's what I'm doing here. I stamped my sentiment with Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink. I affix my sentiment to the panel using liquid glue and now am 
placing my images on the panel and I actually took the large coral sea anemone image from the stamp, cut the top off because I just wanted the bottom, and then I um, used my alcohol markers to color that off camera. And I needed to disguise the top uh, area where I had cut it off. Um, because there were a few lines and things showing. So I placed a starfish on top and that completely disguised those extra lines from where I cut the, the uh, image apart. Now that I have an idea of where I want my large image, I am going to go ahead and use liquid glue to affix that to my panel. To give dimension to my fish and my third starfish, I am popping those up on um, EK Tools 3D dots foam squares and am taking the release paper off of each. And um, I take the paper off of the smaller pieces first because that's easier for me. Next, I'm going to trim the excess off of the sides, and then I will take my panel and mount it directly onto my card base. I've partially removed the release paper from the double-sided tape that I used on the back of the panel, and then once I get this affixed where I want it, I will remove the remaining release tape. And I'm placing some low-tack tape inside of my panel just so that it will lay flat and I am now using Nuvo Crystal Morning Dew Drops to add some clear uh, bubbles to my panel. Card number two is a slimline card. I made this panel uh, during a play date with my gel press and I did not film it so I will have to do a video uh, using the gel press or the gel plate uh, at a later date. At any rate I used uh, distress inks. I used um, peacock feathers and chipped sapphire and picket fence um, to make this panel and I love the way that came out. It looks like little mini bubbles and spots. So we'll show that process in a future video. And here I have um, my gel press is five by seven. So uh, my slimline cards usually measure eight and a half inches long. So I had to piece this together. And I do have a video on how I um, piece together papers for my slimline cards if they're not long enough. And that's exactly what I did here. And I used a, a decal foil opal, which is more of a translucent foil, to um, affix on top of my double-sided tape. I will try to link to that video where I show this process in detail. Here I'm using Waffle Flower A7 dies to cut out a window from white cardstock. And I am using the, the die that's three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And I have die cut it once. I'm going to uh, place it back in my die cutting machine. I am using the grooves from the first cut to line up the second cut and tape that together um, using low tack tape. And this frame measures three and a quarter by seven and three quarters. I'm affixing a double-sided tape to the back of the frame 
I am going to affix my white frame to my focal panel that measures three and a half by seven and seven eighths. I have stamped my sentiments off camera and am using two of them and placing them at an angle and trimming them down to fit just inside of my white frame. I did heat emboss my sentiments using Brutus Monroe Alabaster White uh, embossing powder. Now I'm affixing my images to my focal panel using liquid glue. I want a menagerie of sea life in this scene. So the whole scene is underwater. Uh, so I'm affixing the jellyfish and the seahorse, the clownfish, the two other fish from the kit, uh, some clams and um, a coral type water plant. <laughs> Using my scissors I trimmed off a little excess from this fish and then used my black gel pen to color in uh, the eye and some liquid glue to affix it to my panel. Now I'm bringing in my clownfish. Now I'm mounting it to the card base and we'll use my Nouveau Crystal Glitter Drops in White Blizzard to add some sparkle and shine uh, and clear bubbles to this card. You'll notice that I used the image is at the bottom to cover the connecting panel uh, pieces. So you can't even tell that this panel, uh, these were two different card pieces. My third card for this video is an A2 card. I'm using Hero Hues Paradise card stock. I am taking the large coral sea anemone um, image, uh, the die, and taping that using low tack tape, taping that onto my card stock, and am going to do some partial die cutting. Once I get it positioned and taped to my card base, I am going to use my um, die cutting plate, place it partially over the image and die cut. Um, and it's only going to cut where my die plate uh, rests on the paper, so it won't cut anything beyond the top die plate. Then I take my scissors and snip, uh, snip the die cut part off and I'm left with a partial die cut of the large image. Lovely. I place that large stamp in my Misty, prepping my Hero Hughes Paradise Card Stock for heat embossing. Using my VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, I am going to stamp the image here. I'm using clear embossing powder to emboss the image. I looked up sea anemones and uh, see that they come in many different colors. Um, and spotted blues and purples, which I wanted to use in my design. So I am loving this. Here I'm using some low tack post it note tape to tape uh, the inside because I want to stamp on my right, on the right side of my card base. So I have my inverse bubble stamp in my Misty, placed my cardstock uh, down and prepped it for heat embossing and now am using Peacock Feathers Distress Ink 
And as soon as I put my stamp to paper, I thought, oh, I should have moved my panel over a little from the left, so a little bit more to the right. Um, but I will fix that in just a bit. So inking up this panel, I am going to use Hero Arts White Satin Pearl ink because it leaves a pearly sheen um, and maintains the color underneath, which is, is what I want. It actually mutes the color just a bit, so it softens it. So now that I've heat embossed that inside panel, I am going to trim down about an eighth of an inch, trim down uh, the top of the panel to remove that area that I did not stamp. So this is a piece of white cardstock from the frame that I cut in card number two, and I'm just placing it on the inside of my panel and trimming it down a bit so that the white does not show through my front panel. And then I'm going to use liquid adhesive to adhere this to the inside of my card. This gives me a place to write my message. And so I'm holding this together with my tweezers and then I will just fold that in place a clear acrylic block on top um, and then start to work on the front of my card. I'm using liquid glue to affix my large focal image to the front panel. I am placing a scrap piece of paper on the inside in case some of my glue seeps through. I don't want it to ruin my back panel. And I am just lining my focal image up on the partial die cut panel, trimming any excess uh, from the edges and beautiful. I stamp my sentiment on black cardstock using white, um, alabaster white Brutus Monroe embossing powder and heat set that off camera and now am figuring out where I want to place my sentiment strip. I cut a blank black strip same size as my sentiment strip to use as a backing. So I've used liquid adhesive to place my sentiment on the front. I place liquid adhesive on my backer strip of cardstock and then place that and line that up with my front sentiment strip. Um, and then affix that down, place an acrylic block on it to let it set. I place a seahorse on the inside and make sure it doesn't show through to the front. Uh, place that on the inside uh, on my white panel. And it's at this moment that I decide I want something on the left side of my card. And I remember the bubbles from the kit and yay, pulled those out, pulled out my peacock feathers distress ink and applied bubbles to the left side of my front panel. Lovely. Can you tell I got really excited about these bubbles because I thought, the left side of my panel is pretty plain, so I am loving these bubbles. And when I'm done with the bubbles, I'm going to bring in some Studio Katia Magic Mint 4 millimeter, four millimeter sequins and add those throughout the left side of the design. And I apply those or fix those with my Ranger Multi Matte Medium Glue um, with a little precision tip. Lovely. I place a final bubble on the inside right above the seahorse.
Let's take a look back at all of the cards I made in today's video. Let me know in the comments which card you liked best. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, good day, friends.